Hey everybody, we are still on Theory of the Firm and we are in a unit called Cost of Production. And now we're going to take a look at the average cost curves and the marginal cost curve. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the average variable cost curve and the marginal cost curve. Now, we are almost at the end of the Cost of Production unit, okay? We've actually been building to this point so that we can finally draw that marginal cost curve, okay? We're going to that marginal cost curve. And we want to deeply understand it and understand how a marginal curve curve is different than an average curve. That's you know, what this video is all about. So just a couple really easy things that we should kind of know right now, right? Average variable cost, what does average variable cost equal? It equals the total variable cost, okay, divided by the quantity. There, therefore, what does that mean? It means a, ABC, the average variable cost, times the quantity equals the variable cost or total variable cost. Now notice, I just rewrote that expression. Hopefully you're going, no, no duh, that's easy. But hold on, check where I'm going here, okay? Marginal cost. Marginal cost is the additional cost of producing one more unit. Here's a key point, guys. Marginal cost is specific for whichever unit we are producing, okay? It is specific for whichever unit we are producing. Average variable cost is dependent, okay? Whatever the average is, is dependent on how much we produce. Not true for MC. By the way, this is what part of the video you might want to rewind because this is the key part right here. Okay, not true for MC. It's not dependent. Its value is not dependent on how much we produce. It literally is telling us how much it's going to cost us to produce each additional unit. Okay, whatever it is for the 38th good, that's what it is for the 38th good. Okay, here's what, you know, a, a takeaway from what I'm saying right now. And I know it's kind of confusing but important. You will never see this written in economics. Marginal cost times quantity. Notice, you'll see average variable cost times quantity. That's the variable cost. You will never see this written because it has no meaning, okay? It's not applicable. It has no meaning. Why? Because marginal cost, like I said, is specific for each unit of output, okay? It is not dependent on how much you produce like average variable cost. Now, if you stay with me that, this far in this video, I'm proud of you. Stay with me, okay, because we're going to go even further into this. Actually, let me kind of pivot over to here. Now I'm going to try to graph some things, and I'm going to do this kind of like parallel. I'm going to parallel marginal cost with something that we all understand, which is our marginal grade, okay? And I'm going <laughs> to parallel the average variable cost with our average grade, okay? So... What is our marginal grade? That is the grade that we make on a specific assignment. We all understand that, okay? Our marginal grade, what we're talking about, is the grade you made on a specific assignment. What's our average grade? Well, you don't even need me to define that, right? You just take all of the, the grades you made on your specific si assignments, divide them uh, by how many assignments there were, and you have your average. That's straightforward, right? The average we get, and the marginal we get too, it's just we never called it our marginal grade. It's the grade you get on a specific assignment. So here we go. Once again, examples, right? Numbers. This is what brings it home. This is when it makes it easy. When I stop talking like this and I show you something. Here we go. First assignment, okay? First assignment or first good produced, right? Because remember, we're paralleling what, you know, grades with cost of production, okay? First assignment, your grade you make on that is an 80. So I'm going to put a red dot right there. I like to use red for my marginal cost or marginal grade, okay? Now, what does that mean? Well, if that was the only assignment all year long and you're asked what your average would be, you know what your average would be. It would be that grade. So if there's only one assignment, your average would be an 80, okay? So hopefully that makes sense to you. So the first grade is an 80, and if that's all there was, your average would be an 80. Let's go to the second grade. Second grade, second assignment. There is another assignment. And what you make on that is a 70, okay? So your marginal grade is a 70. However, that would not be your average, right? What would your average be? Well, if there were only two assignments, the first two assignments, and that's all we used, your average would be right there, okay? It would be a 75. Now notice something right off the bat. If your marginal grade is below your average, you're gonna pull your average down. If the marginal cost is below the average variable cost, or the average total cost for that matter, the average any cost, if the marginal is below it, it's going to pull it down. All right, so let's go to the third assignment. 
So there is a third assignment. On the third assignment, this is not good news. All right, you're gonna make a 60, okay? Hopefully you don't make a 60, but we made a 60. I made a 60, somebody made a 60, okay? What would the average be? Well, the marginal grade is below the average. The average is gonna get pulled down. The average would be a 70. So let me be very specific, okay? The grade you made for the first assignment was an 80. The grade you made for the second assignment was a 70. And the grade you made for the third assignment was a 60. Now watch how I talk about average. If there was only one assignment, you would have made an 80 average. If, if there was two assignments and only two assignments, your average would have been a 75. If there were three assignments, your average would have been a 70. Notice, I'm talking about that in a little different language, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. That's truly the difference between marginal cost and average variable cost or average cost, okay? So take a look at this. Once again, if your marginal, and I'm gonna now switch over to talking about cost, okay, away from grades. If your marginal cost is below your average, it's pulling the average down. Now watch what I do here, okay? Those black dots right there, that's the average variable cost curve. I'm gonna connect them, and then I'm gonna go up, okay? Why am I gonna draw it that way? Because we've seen that curve in earlier videos. We know the average variable cost curve looks like that. That's why we're doing this cost of production a whole unit, is so you understand every single step of this. Why does it look like this? Hopefully you're thinking, I know why. Increasing returns, maybe some constant returns, and then eventually diminishing or decreasing returns. So if that is the shape of the average variable cost, well, how does the marginal cost relate, okay? Well, it is going to be underneath the average variable cost if the average variable cost is going down. But if the marginal cost gets above the average for any unit of output, for any of these units over here, okay, and by the way, I just changed my scale, okay, which is not so important, okay, for any of these units, if the marginal is above the average, it's pulling the average up, okay? So what does that mean? It means the MC is going to intersect the AVC at the AVC's minimum. So minimum AVC, okay? Once again, why is that? Because if the marginal is below the average, it's pulling it down. As soon as the marginal gets above the average, it's gonna pull the average up, okay? So hopefully that makes a lot of sense to us. So this is a very key relationship. And now I'm gonna put in our average total cost curve, okay? So the average total cost curve starting somewhere above where we started uh, here, okay? Don't like where I put that, I'm gonna put it about right there. Why? Because we have to add on to our average variable cost, our average fixed cost, which actually might be way more, okay, but we're just doing the concept here. And then that average total cost curve is going down until it hits MC, just the way ABC went down until I hit MC, and then the ATC is going up, okay? That dot right there is minimum ATC. Now, I'm just kind of looking at this graph I don't think I did an awesome job. Looks like my red line is just a little bit left, so I'm just gonna make this dot really big so you're not confused. Make that dot really big so you're not confused. So you can see MCs going through minimum ABC, MCs going through minimum ATC. That's the way those three curves look together. Hopefully that made sense, guys. It's super important we understand the difference between our average cost curves and our marginal cost curves. At the end of the day, we are going to make decisions based on our marginal cost curve, which is very closely related to that AVC curve. Hopefully you noticed that. Anyhow, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next video.